Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informo back with the new, a new latest and greatest Mr. Informo podcast. I almost slipped right there. But don't be surprised if I do slip again or maybe slip later. So this is the Mr. Informo podcast 206. I hope you are doing well today. I hope you are healthy. We are in the month of October and this is halloween halloween and fall month and please do not forget to add me on instagram m-i-s-t-e-r-i-n-f-o-r-m-a-l and then check out my website mrinformal.com m-r-i-n-f-o-r-m-a-l.com so what do we have for this mr informal podcast 206 for topics is generation z looks like we'll have more death coming early black friday will soon start not only that number three is stitch fix is closing its usa factory and then last but not least number four is in uh facebook now called meta is retiring this thing called instant articles i didn't even know it existed but luckily that's good that they're retiring it I, I don't even know what facebook is doing in terms of news since they don't even know what they're talking about so those are the four topics for this mr informal podcast and so let's go ahead and start the podcast first topic is from retail.com titled nearly half of gen z millennials to rely on buy now pay later this holiday per report as shoppers stretch their holiday budget, a survey of 1,000 consumers from the consumer techno- uh, service technology from Blue Dot found that 4 in 10 respondent- respondents said they have said, said they plan to pay for their holiday purchases with buy now, pay later services. The survey found that almost half, 48% of Gen Z respondents said they plan on to use buy now, pay later services for this holiday season followed by millennials 47%, Gen X 47%, 40%, and baby boomers 14%. 19% said they're using buy now pay later services because they're low on cash. 80% of respondents said they don't they plan to shop via retail and mobile apps the same amount or more during to 2022 holiday season the last year. More than half 55% of respondents said they plan to use retail's mobile apps because they are easy to use while 38% say they are looking for a discount. Unbelievable. More people want to use buy now pay later which can lead to more depth. This is what I'm saying. Gen Z should not even be following this. Gen Z should be learning from their uh, predecessor. They should be learning not to use buy now pay later. If you don't have the cash don't even think about buying anything. Don't even think about having to hoard all that stuff. So, buy now, pay later surged uh, last year with Afterpay posting a 34% jump in store and online installment payment orders from 2020 holiday season to 2021. But but of the Gen Z consumer who use buy now, pay later platforms for the holiday purchases in 2021, 43% 43% had missed at least one installment payment that year, according to Pip's Slay report. This is exactly what I mean. So this year's holiday shopping data signals a major opportunity for retailers not just to lure consumers to the store, but also boost long-term customer engagement. Uh, by Judy Chan, a Blue Dot Chief Marketing Officer. While not a complete land grab, retailers can definitely take advantage of the holidays to impress consumers as they are more willing to hear from them. In addition, buy now, pay later. Blue Dot's report echoes other research indicating that Consumers are relying more on credit cards to stretch their budgets. You see, this is a big, huge problem. See, I wasn't not opposed to buy now, pay later, because if there's a way for you to make money, sure. But what I do not like is that Gen Z is not learning from 
past mistakes or others mistakes i guess you can say they should not even be thinking about it look if you don't have the money don't even think about buying at all just maybe save up money or instead if you have the cash now then wait until black friday or when christmas is around and then buy it that extra time and patience will certainly reward the Gen Z if they actually do that. But apparently half of them are not even doing it per report. And I, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. And this is why I titled Gen Z debt because it looks like they're going to have more debt than the previous predecessor. And they should not be having debt. They should actually be saving money, preparing themselves for the future get uh getting uh bettering themselves for the future actually they shouldn't have to go through this but apparently marketing is just that good to the point where they are being influenced by buy now pay later with all these instagram with all this favorable moments happening through social media getting high off social media so you gotta have the exclusive stuff it's getting ridiculous nowadays but this is just terrible if they keep uh, if they keep going through especially at this pace on to topic number two early black friday so from retail.com title target starts black friday deals early target on monday said it is starting its holiday savings three weeks earlier than last year according to a company announcement week-long black friday deals run through november 26 and are available in store and online through retailers app a new batch of promotion debut each Sunday through Thanksgiving weekend. Deal of the day, especially, I'm sorry, deal of the day special runs through December 24 and features hundreds more items than last year. All at Black Friday shopping can be accessed online through the Target app for the company. Wow, could you believe that? Three weeks early than Black Friday. More people are going to spend money. Obviously, they want to rake in as much sales and profits as they can before the year ends. Targeting is ratcheting up holiday deals in a play for market share during season where consumers are dealing with the impact of inflation. The big box retail already completed its first holiday event dubbed Target Deals Days the first week of October. The company also launched a holiday price matching guarantee on October 26, which goes through December 24. Wow! Unbelievable. Could you believe that? Price matching. <laughs> So Amazon announced a two-day holiday sale to Prime members from October 11 and October 12. Kohl's launched savings starting October 6, and Walmart is introducing its rollbacks more savings event from October 10 to October 13. I mean, I guess everyone was trying to compete with Amazon at the time. I did not even know there were Amazon Prime deals from October 1 and October 12. I guess I missed it, but it's all right. I'm waiting for the Black Friday deals. Because I'm looking at a particular uh, NAS that I was looking for. So, in another report, bank rate found bank rate found that 40% of respondents said that inflation will impact their shopping decisions. Wow, because it's customers, consumers. So, it's going to be quite competitive this Black Friday. See, uh, this Black Friday because. Everyone's is going to start now that Target is starting three weeks early. You know Walmart is gonna get into that. Kohl's is gonna get into that. Amazon is going to is going to get into that. JC is going to go do that. Macy's and basically every department store out there is also going to start their Black Friday shopping. But one thing's for sure is that is that what about Cyber Monday? What's the deal with Cyber Monday? Now Black Friday has always been uh, number one, and then Cyber Monday is starting to be number two. So, what's gonna happen with Cyber Monday? Honestly, I don't really know, but it, it seems like uh, Target is going to apply all uh, the Black Friday deals all throughout Cyber Monday. But as you know, especially with Cyber Monday, electronics is just gets hectic, especially online. So, I'm definitely is. I'm definitely interested in that Cyber Monday because what I'm looking for is definitely that type of device. So certainly consumers or customers are going to have more time to shop 
probably more money to shop than they should especially without what i just talked about in the first topic and it's going to be interesting i know for a fact that they're doing this because they want to get as many sales and then as many profits as they can due to inflation since they're doing this and they know that uh, uh, people have a tight budget that they can only spend so they want to open it all up to as many days as they can just to entice consumers and that's what their take and look uh, it's a good take certainly but don't be surprised if other if their competitors if their competitors get in this too because they're not gonna let target do this by themselves on to the third topic stitch fix to close factory cease production of sustainable size inclusive private label from retail.com stitch fix is closing a pennsylvania cut and sew factory and knitting mill resulting in the loss of 56 jobs according to a filing with the state's department and labor industry the company is committed to supporting affected employees with severance payments that increase with tenor extended uh, health care recruitment resources and other benefits stitch fix spokesperson said by email the parallel box retailer acquired the plant from Moton Mills in 2017 to produce sustainable, size inclusive, private la label dubbed Ma um, Mountain Made. That label will be discontinued, the company said by email. Well, first of all, I feel uh, sorry that these 56 people have to go, and I'm not surprised that they that Stitch Fix de did this because it seems like Stitch Fix don't even know what they want. Not only that, Stitch Fix growth has been. Uh, plateaued and uh, honestly I'm not sure where I'm not sure if a lot of people are, are still shopping at Stitch Fix so Stitch Fix joins Old Navy in attempting to merchandise for more cons uh, customers only to scale that back not long after the mo it's Monta Mills closure comes in as the apparel box retail slashes expenses to stem losses in June, the company cut about 330 positions. Wow, 330. 15% of its salary workforce in its fiscal year just ended. Net revenue fell 1.4% to pool $2.1 billion as net loss grew to $207 million from $8.9 million last year. What were they doing to lose that much money? And the cost of goods sold rose nearly 1%. Well, obviously, the company lost 370,000 customers in its most recent quarter, or 9% of its active client base. So this factory is basically um, makes access to 3X, access to 3XL in, in men's. So access to 3X in women's and an access to 3XL in men's. So I'm guessing that they don't have a lot of customers that are like that. If they don't, then why did they even start? But you know what? I don't understand why did they, they have to close this. Why can't they just keep this going and have it as a made in USA? So are, they, are you telling me that they're gonna have everything made overseas now? Well, if I was a Stitch Fix customer, I would not want, I would, I would definitely discontinue the Stitch Fix subscription or just close my account at all. So it, it's really too bad that they have to do this because I actually think this could be a good thing for them as long as if they market it good. But apparently they're, they're just going to close this because maybe a lot of uh, they don't have customers that are these big of a sizes. Maybe they don't have enough fat customers. That's all it is, you know, when it comes down to. But honestly, I feel as though Stitch Fix don't even know don't even know what they want right now. They they are lost. They don't even know their own customers right now because they just had 270k customers um, closing their account. On to the last topic topic number four from social media today titled facebook announces the retirement of instant articles the latest step in reformation of the app i did not even know there's a thing called instant articles 
Facebook continues to ship away for news content preference for entertaining video, a la TikTok or Shorts. Originally launched in 2015, insert articles were designed to provide publishers with more engaging, fast-loading way to present their articles on Facebook, helping to maximize readers' engagement within the app. In the years since, Meta has also sought in to add more referral link and subscription tools as part of its ongoing effort to provide uh, in, uh, ingratiate itself with publishers and help them use Facebook as a complementary platform to their main site. But now building publishers relationship has seemingly become lesser priority. As reported by Axios, Meta's ending support of for instant article as it works better to align to user and prefer, uh, user preference which increasingly see video being its most engaging content format well if you're going to facebook for news and articles i have bad i have bad news for you you are not that smart meta ceo mark zuckerberg recently noted that video viewing makes up 50 percent of all time sp spent on Facebook while Reels is fastest growing content format. Well, think about it. Facebook was made for social media. It was not made for news. Isn't that obvious, Mark? So, as per Meta, currently less than 3% of what people around the world see in Facebook feed are posts with links to news articles. And as we said earlier this year, as a business, it doesn't make sense to overinvest in areas that don't align with user preference. That's because they don't use Facebook as news. They know that Facebook is fake news or Meta is fake news and has fake news. And you got this called what? Checkers? Um, you know, fact checkers, and yet Facebook make a make itself a mistake by having these fact checkers have fact checks. So honestly, I'm glad that they're doing this. Honestly, anytime I see Facebook have retire another thing, I'm always I'm always clapping direct my hands. I'm always smiling. Heck, if Facebook ends today, I'm okay with that too. I don't really mind. Because as you know, all they do is just hoarding data and they also break these privacy rules. And me personally, anything that Mark, any idea that Mark has that fails, I'm all for it. Because honestly, I don't think Facebook should even go through these short videos and reels. Why not make Facebook be more interactive? I don't think having these shorts or reels make itself inter uh, interactive. Not only that, you have Instagram too. You have WhatsApp. So, and then you have a Facebook Messenger. So you're basically competing with your own. You're cannibalizing yourself. So again, Facebook does Facebook even know itself? Look, I know they're called Meta, but I'm just gonna call them Facebook. Because that's what everyone knows them for. And people don't go to meta.com, they go to facebook.com. So I'm just trying to understand what Facebook is doing. But as you know, I don't even try to understand because they don't even know themselves. And so that basically concludes this Mr. Informal pod podcast number 206. Hopefully, you enjoyed listening to me from beginning to end. And if you did, I do appreciate and hopefully I gave some insights and also gave you some news that you did not hear heard before. And so please do not forget to add me on Instagram, M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L and check out my website, mrinformal.com, M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com. And please always stay healthy, be healthy and enjoy life. And certainly Halloween is coming. Hopefully you have your Halloween costume prep especially since it's coming up and so i will see you in the next podcast bye bye